So step five, we can finally benefit from all the early setups uh, and configurations we've done in the previous videos. And if you remember, uh, during the initial project setup inside Localize, I did uh, enable automations so that the moment I pushed uh, English values into the project, I was fed machine translated values for German and Russian. Uh, this means that at this stage, I can simply press on the list of view and select the target language and press a button, update my design with translated values for German. Um, the use case here was machine translated uh, is excellent for a sandbox project for designers to connect to and have a very fast design test uh, with translated values from machine translations. It's not going to be the final one, so it still needs, you know, uh, human uh, revision or human editing. Uh, but it's it's a nice uh, quick quick solution, quick win to test your design early on. And we can already see that uh, my design needs a bit of an adjustment for uh, German strings. Here we cannot even see the start or the end of it. Um, it has expanded that much. And similarly, I could just press on Russian, update it, and see the result with uh, Cyrillic, the Cyrillic alphabet, see if my font uh, needs to be changed, or again, if I need to adjust my design um, to make sure that it's adapted for the, the Russian language as well. Perfect. Now let's navigate into localize. So I'll type in localize.com and see how all of this appears in our project. Press login. And the first project to appear is then the design stage localization. It's the last project that I created. You can press on the project's name and you're directed inside the project's dashboard. So here you're presented with all the different uh, keys and key names that were created from the plugin. As you can see, then a key name was generated automatically for me based on the key name convention selected and based on the naming of my design. So the artboard and the elements, if it's properly named, it's very simple to use our out of the box uh, key naming generator. Then we were presented with the, the key tag that was created from the plugin. So that, that's just an added value for you know, project managers or any stakeholders that's working inside Localize. They can use this value to filter through and find the, the specific keys that were created from the design at this stage. More than that, we can see the iOS and the Android platform, which is excellent then for exporting. Uh, they will be automatically selected uh, once your, when your developers for example, select uh, the iOS file formats or the Android file formats. Well, those are the key names that will be reflected there. And small description just telling me that this key was created from Figma at this stage. Similarly, you see the English uh, string values pushed from the design and the machine translated values appearing right here. Just to make life easier, then there's the custom translation statuses telling me the source of these values. So I know what, what's the next step with them. If it's machine translated, uh, most likely they'll need a review cycle, some human e editing, if not human translation. And the first one was created from Figma. Similarly, if I changed any value inside Figma and pushed it again uh, for this key, then it would uh, switch to updated from Figma. A nice little way to inform your stakeholders in Localize um, who did what and at what time. And now for the most important aspect. So by pushing screenshots, um, you're helping your translators uh, get that vi much needed visual context that they really require to offer you uh, qualified translations. It lowers, again, the back and forth, uh, lowers the LQA issues that you may have. And our OCR uh, then scanned the image and tagged the text value, which is based then on the base uh, base text value right here. So it's very easy to for the translators to just open up and get all the context that they require uh, inside Localize. No need to, to bother you for extra uh, screenshots after this.